well, today's scripture reading comes from John chapter 1, verses 6 through 13. And um, we're going to do an alternate reading, which means that I'll read the first verse and we'll all respond with the verse after that. And uh, we ask that you please stand as able once you've found the scripture, or you can read it just right uh, behind us here. Um, and uh, so again, I'll read the first verse. We all respond with the verse after that. We'll keep going back and forth until we get to verse 13. All right. Well, may the Lord bless the reading of God's word for us today. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Amen. Well, today's message is the true light, and it's continuing our sermon series that we just began last week. Um, and, and our sermon series, our kind of what I'm calling the meta sermon series that's going to run through this whole year, um, is called uh, All in Christ. And all is an acronym. Uh, it stands for abundant life and love in Christ. And friends, you know, do you ever think about, like, what is it that you really want in life? You know, what, what do you want, really, when you think about it? Don't all of us want abundant life and love? You know, like, doesn't that kind of boil down to everything? I mean, even if you were chasing that through, like, really kind of material means, you know, like, man, you know, I, I want to... Uh, go to the best school and get the best education and get the best career and, you know, make a lot of money and be recognized. Why do we want all of that? Because we think it'll make our lives full. We think it'll make us happy. We think it'll make us secure and content because we want full lives. We think it'll afford us the freedom to go and do what we want, right? And, and thereby live abundantly. And, and we think that, you know, maybe somehow, some way, people will recognize that. People will love us more for it. You know, people will recognize that we're worthy of love. And so we're all chasing abundant life and love, whether we know it or not. But I think if, we be, if we're really honest with ourselves, we are. And so the kind of uh, uh, argument that we're making this whole year is that the ways that we truly get that is by getting it in Christ. And so last week, we began in, in the Gospel of John because, hey, if we're going to find our abundant life and love in Christ, we have to know who Christ is. So we talked about this idea that um, in Jesus, in Christ, is all life. And so today, we're going to talk about this idea that in him is all light. And so, you know, you think about like, well, what is light? Well, light is a good thing, isn't it? You know, we'll explain more what light is. I mean, I think we all know, right, in a lot of ways. Light is good. And who wouldn't want the light? But friends, I want to make the argument that actually a lot of us don't want light. And, and what we found is that with Jesus, if Jesus is light, well, friends, not everybody wants Jesus. And not everybody wanted Jesus when he was alive. We already said Jesus in Jesus is all life. We can get abundant life and love in Christ. Who wouldn't want him? And yet, there were a lot of people in Jesus' day who even saw him do miracles, saw him raise people from the dead. They saw him multiply loaves of bread and fish. They saw him walk on water. They saw him do awesome things, and some of them would reject him. Some of them would say, Jesus, whatever you have, thanks, but no thanks. And friends, I want to figure out why that is. You know, um, so let, let's take a look at this scripture, and we'll see that. We'll see some of that theme come out. Um, so in verse 6, it says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. So we see here already, like John, he was a good dude. He was recognized as a prophet. As, you know, sometimes in scripture it says that he was the chief among prophets. He's a good dude, but he was not the light. 
There's a lot of things in this world that are good, but they're not the light. They're not the true light. The true light, which John is arguing, is Jesus. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. And so, friends, you know, we'll put this up as a question. Why did people reject Jesus? Why are there people that did not receive Jesus? If he's the true light, if in him is true life, why would some people pass? And, friends, I'm going to make the argument, too, that it's not just people back then, but people pass on Jesus all the time. Sometimes we think it's just a matter of belief, like, oh, if I saw Jesus, then I would believe. But like we said, there are people who saw Jesus, and they still passed. They still said no thanks. And friends, I want us to recognize and to be honest with ourselves, because if we can recognize that, the argument I'm going to try to make is if we can recognize maybe some of the reasons why we turn away from Jesus, why we don't want to fully receive him, then we can receive more of him, and we can find that abundant life, and love in Christ. Amen? Amen. So friends, what is light? Well, let me tell you a few things about light, all right? So some of these things are going to be like super obvious. But one of the things that maybe you don't think about all the time is we think of light as a positive thing, but doesn't light hurt? Is anyone who uh, got the welcome packets, um, do you have the, the lights that we gave you? Can someone toss that to me real quick? I'll give it back, I promise. <laughs> If you put it together, that's awesome. If you didn't, or you can just toss me the packet. I'll, I'll give it back to you, I promise. <laughs> All right, just toss it. Whoa, nice throw. Very good throw. Uh, so we, we have these little lights, and um, it's got LGM on it. And when you put the light battery in, something you'll notice is the light is not very bright. By the way, friends, um, I know some people have been like kind of not complaining, but just in a very joking way, like, Pastor Steve, I know like these welcome gifts are new, but it's not fair. Like I've been to LGM for a long time. We never got a welcome gift. So friends, everyone will get a light on your way out. All right. So, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, but friends, when you put this light in with this tiny little battery, you're going to find that the light is not very bright. But you'll find even with this light, I'm not going to do it, but if you shine it in someone's eyes, what happens? We look away, it blinds you for a little bit, right? And so your instinct is, oh, it hurts your eyes. Right, thank you so much. Uh, You can have it back. Good catch. (laughs) You know, and so lights, they hurt, right? Um, You know, especially if you've been in darkness for a while. We've all experienced this. You wake up for the first time and, you know, when you were growing up, like, isn't this the way that your, your parents would wake you up? You know, for parents, isn't this the way you wake up your kids? This is the way we wake up our kids. First thing you do is you turn on the lights, right? Because it's just a shock to the system. You know, that's what you got to do when you wake someone up. You just need a shock to the system. And so immediately we turn our eyes away. We don't want to look at the light because it's blinding. But friends, we know the brighter the light, the more it hurts. And so they even say, do not look directly at the sun, you know? Um, People say you can get permanent damage to your eyes if you look straight at the sun, you know? And so the sun, we know, is a star. It's the star that that illuminates our system and gives us lights and life and all these things, right? But it's only one star. There are many stars out there. It's a very powerful star. But this is saying that Jesus is the true light. Yeah, there are other lights out there. They're bright. There's the sun. It's really bright. But Jesus is even brighter than the sun. That's what John is arguing. He is the brightest light. And friends, it stands to reason, if Jesus is the brightest light, then Jesus, when his light shines on you, it hurts sometimes. Why does it hurt? It hurts because um, maybe we've been in the darkness and the light is shocking. It hurts and we turn away from it Not just because it hurts, but because it exposes us, right? You know, so if things are in darkness, you can't see it. But when the light shines your light, uh, when light shines its light on things, it, it, it makes it so that it's exposed, so everyone sees it for what it is. It's kind of like, um, you know, like HDTVs. 
Uh, so one of the things I noticed about HD TVs is that they're beautiful. How many people have a HD TV, high definition? Right? Okay, a lot of you guys. Um, some of you not yet, so, you know, but you've seen one, right? Um, and, and so the thing is, um, HD TVs are awesome. And the first time I got one or saw one, I'm just like, I, you know, this is awesome. I want this. You know, just everything's so clear, you know? But the thing about HD TVs is it makes everything clear. So you see beautiful things. You ever like watch like the Planet Earth documentary from the BBC? You're like, you know, our world is so beautiful. Look, on this TV, I can see every blade of grass and I can see like the fur on that Arctic fox. And I can see like the beautiful Aurora Borealis and it's so glorious. And then you watch an NBA game and you see every bead of sweat on these players and you're like, oh, I don't know that I needed to see that, right? And then I remember I was watching a news program for the first time on my HD TV. Oh, it's so pretty. And then they showed these news anchors that I had seen before in SD, standard definition, right? I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, good-looking news anchors. And I could see every pore in their skin. I could see every flaw and blemish. I could see, like, where the makeup ended, right? And it's like kind of caked on a little bit. You can see every freckle. You, you can see their moles and you can see a little bit of hair sticking out of the mole. You're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to see that, right? Too much. TMI, too much information. You know, I don't want to see every flaw and blemish. And friends, the brighter the light, the more you see. And this is the way Jesus works. When Jesus shines his light in the world, all the darkness gets dissipated. And everything gets exposed. And there are many people that could not stand that. And they turned away, right? And, you know, so Jesus is perfect, right? Jesus is the perfect man. He is God. So he lived the perfect life. Do you ever see, like, you know, someone who just is so good, it exposes you? Like, I don't know, maybe, like, you try to learn how to play the piano. And you're really proud of yourself because you figured out how to play you know, I don't know, some like Ode to Joy or something, or you just kind of tap out a little melody, happy birthday to you. Dun, 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 dun. And you're like kind of patting yourself on the back. You're like, man, I'm pretty good at piano, right? And then some like U of M music student comes in, you know, some expert virtuoso pianist comes in, and you're tapping out happy birthday, dun, 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 dun. And they come, and they just start, like, blowing it away on the keys, just like, you know, and they're just playing this complex melody, and you're like, yeah, my happy birthday to you doesn't look so hot anymore, right? It exposed my happy birthday to you. It exposed my lack of piano skills, you know? And Jesus had this effect on people. Jesus would come, and he lived a perfect life. And th th there's these religious leaders that didn't live perfect lives, but they try to act like it, right? They try to show the world that they were so perfect and good. But really, inside, Jesus saw them for what they were, and he would call them. He'd say, you are whitewashed tombs. You clean the outside, so it looks really good, but on the inside, you are spiritually dead, how do you think they responded to that? Like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for speaking the truth in love. We like it. Bring it on. No, you know what, how they responded? They said, they, they gathered their friends. They're like, okay, we got to figure out how to kill this guy. Too much truth. Too much truth. I think they wanted to kill Jesus because they exposed the truth of who they really were. And they couldn't stand it. Friends, did, did, has there ever been a time where, you know, like, the, the truth gets exposed in you, and you just want to hide from it. You don't want anyone to know that. Maybe you even deny it yourself. You know, you ever, like, send an email to a professor, um, and maybe, like, you screwed up? Like, like I've done this before. I, I, like, overslept for a test. I emailed the professor. And then the professor's email shows up. The truth comes out. The truth is going to come out one way or the other. I have to face it. The professor knows it. And then I look at that email, the, my professor's name, and I'm like, I'm not going to read this right now. <laughs> I'm going to go play a video game. I'm going to go pretend like this email doesn't exist. Because once I open the email, it gets real. Right? I'm going to know one way or another what my fate is. I don't want to know that. You ever get like that, friends? We want to deny the truth because the truth is too painful for us. Or we think it's going to be too painful. So we hide. 
we, we turn our eyes away. It's too bright for us. And maybe Jesus has that effect on you. But friends, you know, so some of you may be thinking like, oh, Pastor Steve, you're doing a good job of convincing me not to turn to Jesus. <laughs> and friends, I want to convince you that light is better than darkness. See, the thing is that if we just exist in the dark, right, like all kinds of things can occur in the dark, you know? And so like, like criminals love the dark, right? There's more crime that, that occurs in the dark than in the light, right? It makes sense. Like most crimes committed at night, you know, if you want to reduce the crime rate in your, na- your neighborhood, all you got to do is get better lighting, right? Just shine a bunch of floodlights everywhere and you will have less crime, right? Because people who do those things, they can't hide anymore. It gets exposed, right? And so, you know, darkness can hide things, but without the light, you don't know where you're going. You don't know what the right way is. And so, friends, we asked from the top the question that all of us want to know the answer to. How do I get that abundant life and love? How do I find the way? And if, if, if God is the best thing in this world, you know, God created us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He designed you the way you are. He designed your heart, your desires, your yearnings, your dreams. So God, more than anyone, knows how you, how you work, how you tick, and, and what can satiate all those things within you. Then doesn't it make sense then, if God is the greatest thing, then the best thing that we can have is him. How do we get to God? How do we get to the Father? The way we do that is through Jesus. And Jesus is the light. He lights the path. He's trying to show you that. And without knowing that, friends, you know, we're not gonna know our way. The thing with darkness is it hides everything. The thing is when you turn away, you know, somebody asked me this question um, that I think is a good question. Someone asked me, Steve, why can't I just run away from my problems? Why can't I just run away from who I am? It's a good question, isn't it? You ever think about that? Why can't I just run away? You know, why can't I numb myself from the truth? You know, maybe there's an ugly truth about me that I just don't want to know, right? Why can't I just hide the professor's email forever? You know, just never read it. You know why? Because when you hide, you're not just hiding from bad things. You're hiding from everything. Right? So if I never know the truth of my professor's email, I, I don't know one way or another if it's good or bad. Yes, I'm hiding from the possibility that it's bad, but I'm also hiding from the possibility that it's good. So I've told this story before. Um, when I overslept for this test, um, I didn't know what my professor would say, and I like, prayed about it before I, I, I opened it, because I didn't want to open it. I didn't want to know what it said, but a part of me did. So I'm like, oh, I wanna, I'm going to open it. No, I'm not. Oh. And finally, when I opened it, what I found out is the professor was like, Okay, you overslept for this test. You get a zero. But guess what? Did you know that the policy in our class, it's actually in your syllabus, that you can drop the lowest grade of the four tests that we have. So we'll just pretend like that zero never happened. Good news, right? But what if I had just hid from that truth my whole life? I just went through life like, it's so painful. I'm never going to find out what that email says. I never would have finished the class. I never would have found that particular salvation from my problem, right? You hide from bad things, you also hide from good things, right? And friends, the thing is, you know, maybe Jesus will expose you. Jesus will show you for who you are, sins and all. And there's a lot of us we want to hide from that. Jesus would pinpoint people. Um, There's the story of the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman who lived a very sinful life. Um, She had something like five husbands, and then they all didn't work out. And then she was with a man who wasn't her husband. She was a complete um, pariah in her society. Nobody wanted to hang out with her. She would go to the well when no one else was there. And Jesus, when he sat down with her, he knew her whole life. And so when when Jesus said to her, hey, go get your husband and bring him back, she says, I have no husband. And Jesus says, well, you were very honest with me. In fact, you don't have a husband, Um, you've had five husbands, and the man you're with now is not your husband. He knew the truth of her, right? But see, the thing is like, okay, so just knowing the truth of you, is that good news or bad news? Because friends, the thing is, a lot of us, we just assume it's bad news. We assume that if people knew things about us, they wouldn't love us, right? 
If people knew how bad I was, you know, maybe the woman at the well is like, if Jesus knew that I had these five husbands, these five failed marriages, and, and I am like the most, I'm the least desirable person in my entire village. Just people think I'm the scum of the earth. If he knew that, he wouldn't even want to be here with me. He wouldn't even want to talk to me. But she takes a risk and she's honest. And she doesn't run away. She's not like, don't look at me. You know, she stands there in the light. And what she finds is that Jesus doesn't turn away from her. Jesus doesn't reject her. Sometimes we turn away from the light, but the light doesn't turn away from us. Jesus, in fact, kind of calls her as a missionary to her village. Jesus tells her about him, about giving living water that will give life. And the last thing about light is, yes, light hurts, light light guides, and light gives life. We need lights. Yeah, it may hurt to be exposed to the sun. So we think, okay, we're just going to shut ourselves off from the sun. Well, we need the sun, you know? Like, it's a miserable life without the sun. We won't be able to grow any crops, right? We, in fact, wouldn't be able to live without it, right? All life needs the light, and we need the life that comes from Jesus. Jesus makes us truly alive. And it says here, It says, uh, verse 12 and 13, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. So this is the thing, friends. We, We sometimes talk about being children of God, but we are not naturally children of God. We're creatures, we're creations, right? God created us much the way that he created animals and, you know, amoebas and, you know, grass and all that stuff, right? We're creatures, we're creations. The Bible says, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son or one and only son, sometimes it says, or the, the King James Version, only begotten son, which means the only born son. God has only one natural child in this world, and it is Jesus. The rest of us, we're creatures, right? Yes, we are made in the image of God, but we are not his children until the light shines in us and we receive it. If we receive that light, we receive the love that Jesus is trying to give us, And we say, okay, I stand here exposed. I am a sinner. I fall short. I don't deserve your love. I'm not going to hide from it. I'm not going to hide who I am. And what we're going to find is, you know, the light exposes us. Yes, you are a sinner. But I love you. And I choose you to become my child. And when that happens, that's when we get fully accepted into the fold of God. Friends, last week I talked about, um, you know, how we pray to God and how if God is the best thing, you know, Jesus is the life, shouldn't we want to spend time with him? And and I talked about this story of, of, uh, you know, that old man who learned how to pray by talking to Jesus, um, basically talking to an empty chair and pretending like Jesus was sitting in that chair right? And so I I think like, you know, we could come away from that story thinking like, okay, so the key is I just need to be able to talk conversationally with Jesus. You know, I just need to be able to to just be like very casual with Jesus. Hey, what's up, Jesus? You know? And friends, I I have to tell you, um, that's a very popular message now. You know, like, yeah, you know, we should be really casual with Jesus, you know? And friends, I think there's a lot of merit to that. You know, we shouldn't be so afraid to talk to Jesus. We shouldn't be so afraid to talk to God. But I'll tell you this, that in my life, just talking casually to Jesus, hey, what's up, Jesus? Didn't change me. Didn't give me abundant life. Didn't give me abundant life, uh, uh, abundant love, excuse me. Um, didn't give me any of those things, right? Like, you're like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. I'm talking to Jesus. Hey, what's up, Jesus? But it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change a heart. What changes a heart is when the light exposes you and you let him in fully. I tell this story um, about when I was in college, and um, there's a lot of things going on with me in college. One of the things is I had this kind of existential crisis, um, and I had this whole crisis because I was taking this literature class, 
And they were talking about, um, I forget the book, but it's this kind of Eastern European book where um, there's a family and they treated this father really poorly. And the father ends up dying alone and penniless. And not a single one of his children go to his funeral. And, and I remember people in the class, in my literature class, were debating, like, isn't that, like, pathetic that, like, not even one of his kids went to, um, like, his funeral? And I was kind of having this existential crisis. I wasn't sure what I believed about God. And then this was the thought I had. I was like, who cares? He's dead. He doesn't even know that, right? And then I started to think, like, that's a frightening thought. When I'm dead, I won't even know that anything's there. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so frightening. And then I remember I took this philosophy class where they're like, you know, people made up the idea of God because they're afraid of this idea of nothingness. So they just made up a belief in God to make us feel better. And I'm like, oh, is that what I'm doing? I'm very afraid of the darkness. I'm very afraid of being nothing. Maybe there is no God. And, and so I was like all screwed up. And, and I decided like, hey, you know, I don't know if I believe in this God. I would still go to church, but sometimes I'd miss church because I was up late and whatever. And I stopped going to church for a while. And after a while, I got with a group of friends. I joined this fraternity and, you know, I, I just, my life was just completely not about God. I stopped thinking about God. I didn't even know if I believed in God. And so the summer of my, uh, after my freshman year, uh, some friends of mine brought me to a prayer meeting. And I went there only because my friends were there. And I've talked about this story before. Some of you may remember it. But I was sitting there, and, and my friends, like, the way they prayed, like, you know, you can pray however you want, friends, but the way they would pray, they, they would do, like, that kind of, um, like, praying out loud type thing. And so, they, like, some of them were praying very passionately, like, Father God and Jesus, and, you know, like, they're just being, like, all loud and stuff. And so I'm sitting there, all my friends are praying, like, there's a couple people that are, like, playing the guitar, and they're, they're, they're all intense about it. And I'm sitting there, like, like, we're sitting on the floor, all these people are praying, they're all loud, and I'm sitting there, like, this is stupid. You know, I'm like, this is stupid. They're praying to nothing. There's no God. They're just praying because they're afraid of dying. You know, they're afraid of nothingness. And I'm thinking all these like really like depressing thoughts, you know, and then I just sat there and I'm like, but what if I'm wrong? What if there is a God? So I sat there for a while, <laughs> like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes pass. And all my friends are praying and I'm just sitting there. And I'm like, okay, this is stupid. I'm just sitting here doing nothing. Maybe I just should start talking to God. Just say something. Just, just be honest. Why not? If, if there is a God, I don't know. And so I started that. I was like, God, I don't know if you're real. Hi. <laughs> it's a very casual prayer. Hi. I haven't talked to you in a long time. And then I started just being really honest. I said, God, I'm really lonely. God, I, I've done a lot of things that I'm not proud of. God, the truth is that, you know, maybe you are real, but I'd rather have my life than the life you want for me. God, can you forgive me? I'm sorry that I've ignored you. And something started to happen. Like, I just felt this thing in my heart, and I just started confessing. I just started talking more true things about myself. The light was exposing me. I just started confessing all my sins, all those things I did that I wasn't proud of, all those ways that, that I was so desperate for people's love, and I would do anything for it. And before I knew it, I just felt the light of Jesus in my life. I felt that warmth all over. I felt his love. And that night, I recommitted my life to Christ. Friends, what brings us to Jesus is the light of Christ that exposes us. In order for us to know this God, we must be real with him. You remember Jesus said, um, for those of you guys who, who know the scripture, Jesus said, I, I haven't come for those who are well. Doctor doesn't come for those who are well. Doctor comes for those who are sick, right? And friends, the thing is, the reason why Jesus was so harsh on the religious teachers and everything. It's because they didn't think they were sick. They thought they had it all together. And so they actively tried to avoid the light, shining the truth. If somebody threatened them, they would hide behind their robes. They would hide behind their religiosity. They would start pointing the finger. They start getting defensive. They're like, oh yeah? Well, I know more scripture than you, so what's up? You know? I know what you did. I know your family. You're no one to talk, 
right? And so they would point the finger right back at people, but they wouldn't let the light in. Who Jesus was really gentle with is people who would be honest about their sin, people who actually couldn't even hide from it, people who were outcasts from society. He loved them just instinctively, and they loved him back instinctively. Because people already knew their junk. People already knew their crap. There's no hiding from it. The light just shined on it. Every time they stepped out of the house, people would see them. And Jesus saw them too. And maybe some of them were like, oh, is he going to shrink away too? But he didn't. The light shined on them, and the light embraced them. Friends, that is true of you. And friends, I, I want to encourage you because, you know, um, and by the way, you know, you may be like, oh, Steve, where'd you come up with this light stuff? It's biblical. This is what Jesus says about himself in John 14, 6. He is, I am the way, remember, light guides, gives direction, shows you where to go. I am the truth, light hurts because it exposes. It's the truth. It exposes the truth. And the life. I give life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And friends, um, we've been encouraging you guys, and I want to talk about something very practical. We've been talking about this Fantastic Four thing, um, that we put four scriptures in uh, your bulletins, um, and and we started doing this last week. And uh, if you go to Living Grace Ministries' Facebook page, you know, we, we put um, some reflection questions for you. And, and the reason why we're doing this is because we want to kind of help arrange if we can. You know, kind of be like, like sort of fixer-upper, sort of be like a matchmaker to fix you up with Jesus. I want to introduce you, friends, to Jesus. You know, and all these things that we're talking about, the lights that can change your life. You know, sometimes we need to slow ourselves down and to spend some time with Jesus. And so what we wanted to do is, um, starting this week, um, we're going to start reading through Luke, right? And so we said, yeah, this is about all in Christ. So we're going to go back to John and the sermons. But in your own personal time, we want to encourage you to start reading through Luke. And we want to give you the tools to be able to do that. And and we, we encourage anyone, no matter what grade you are, you're in youth group, you're in college, you're a young adult, um, you're a graduate student, you, you, you have a family, you're a little bit older, maybe you don't have a family, but you don't fit one of those categories. No matter where you're at, we have a small group for you. Um, or, or maybe, you know, you're just visiting and you'll end up going to another church. That's fine. You know, go to a small group there too. Um, but friends, in our small groups, um, we're going to talk about those scriptures that we're reading. And we're going to talk about the ways that we've been challenged by it. And, and so, you know, part of the reason why we do that is when you start sharing with people, it brings light into your life, right? That, that's a way of exposing the darkness. You drag the things from the darkness out into the light is by sharing it right? And and when you start sharing with other people. And so, you know, friends, you know, spend time in that scripture, but it's not about just Bible study. It's not just about knowledge. It's about meeting Jesus. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to uh, uh, arrange the meeting between you and Jesus. And so, friends, um, we're going to close with this uh, praise song, and it's called Forever Rain. And we're going to have the praise team come up, and they're going to set up for this song. And I, I just want to read to you a part of this, um, the, the chorus from this song that we're going to be singing. It says, oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever rain. And friends, we have a choice When you start to get exposed to the light, you have a choice. Your choice is to turn away or to run towards it. A lot of people turn away. A lot of people turn away when their sins start getting exposed, when their insecurities start getting exposed, when the things they don't like about themselves start getting exposed. We want to turn away. Jesus, too much information. When our plans start getting exposed. Yeah, God, I'm not doing that for you. I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it because... I want love, and I think that if I do that thing, I'll get love. I think if I have that boyfriend or girlfriend, I'll be loved. And Jesus starts to expose that, and some of us want to turn away because we want to keep our plans. But friends, what this song is encouraging us to do is to run to Jesus. And when you do, friends, you will find that the light is warm. The light might hurt immediately because it exposes you. 
but you'll find that that light embraces you. You'll find that the riches of his love will be enough for you. They will fill you and nothing compares to the embrace of this Savior. That's what I found in my life when I started letting the light in. Friends, even for those of us who call ourselves Christ followers, maybe there's an area of your life that God still wants to expose. Maybe lately we've used the excuse, yeah, I already know you, but I'm not feeling your embrace. Maybe there's some things I'm still trying to hide, I'm still trying to compartmentalize. Friends, as we sing this song, let's run to Jesus. Let's run to his embrace. And let's find out that the light is warm. It is the way, the truth, and the life.